Let's talk some stock picks. Joining us, Lucas Tomiki, founder and managing partner at LRT Capital Management. So we got the uh, macro conversation, I think, well established here. Uh, and our last guest actually mentioned a sector that I know you've got a stock pick in. It's gotten hammered, which is in REITs. So, uh, Lucas, let's jump into a couple stock picks here. When you look at the beaten up stuff in the real estate world, where do you find gems? Hi, Oliver, and thanks for having me. Um, you know, one name that we really like in the REIT space uh, is Crown uh, Castle Communications. Uh, it's a provider of wireless technology, cell phone towers. And, yeah, it's towers, right? Um, yeah, towers and a lot of fiber optics. So that's a name that's been really beaten down quite substantially, as your former guest mentioned, primarily because interest rates have risen and the stock was quite overvalued probably a year ago today the valuation has reset a lot and if you imagine what the environment could look like 12 months from now where we probably get a slowing economy and a fed that is at least talking about cutting rates and long-term rates perhaps easing back a little bit um, that's one of the names that uh, could do really well so is rate sensitivity a big part of the downside that's happened here? I mean, just obliterated. And I know this was a favorite pick of some of my guests a couple of years back. It was pre-COVID, really, but the idea of all the 5G build-out and stuff and that uh, there had been some, if I recall correctly, a little bit of consolidation in the industry. So it seemed like the ones that were building the towers could kind of command the pricing. What went wrong with that thesis? No, I think... Almost nothing went wrong with the thesis. Um, the move that you've seen in the stock, which is down probably 50% from its peak, really has everything to do with the starting valuation, which got a little out of hand, and the fact that the interest rates really have risen a lot. And that for a very long term assets like the company in question here owns, those really affect uh, the valuation very substantially. But on the flip side, if you believe that interest rates could go down or maybe at least stop going up you are looking at uh, potentially explosive upside uh in in the other direction got it well it's done a full uh, round trip basically down to those levels when i first uh, started people uh hearing people get real excited about like 2017 pre-covid stuff so just an, uh, an epic reversal uh so point taken on the valuation ups and downs here that have been pretty extreme uh, you've got another play that's in the housing market, which is Sun Communities. Uh, I think this might be the first time I'm hearing about this one, but this is like RVs meets uh, like uh, uh, like the mobile homes and modular homes. Is it too that they build? Uh, so they don't build homes; they own the land own under the land. which the homes stand. Okay. And so these are effectively RV parks and mobile homes or manufactured home communities. The reality is America has a housing problem. Housing is dramatically too expensive relative to people's incomes, and we keep talking about it. Um, that that level, the, the median house price to median income today is close to six times. Um, for comparison, in the early 90s, it was four times. So it's harder than ever for first time home buyers to buy a house. And while we keep talking about different things that could happen, um, different policies and government interventions and mortgage rates, that ratio of home prices to income keeps rising. And so, Regrettably or not, for a lot of Americans, the solution is is manufactured housing and mobile parks uh, and marinas uh, where people effectively live on boats. Hmm. Um, Sun cool. Communities is one of two companies in the space, uh, the other one being equity lifestyle properties um, that dominates this space. And it's a very long term play. Same theory in terms of interest rate impact uh, as the previous company. All right, well, uh, for being sort of a housing alternative, uh, it's done distinctly worse than the home builders. So maybe there's a gap to be closed there uh, between the two kind of related subjects. Uh, a super interesting one. I want to make sure to get to two more because we're kind of moving up the recognizability spectrum here. Northrop real fast, pulled back, but hasn't gotten slammed as hard as RTX and some of the others in the space. But generally, the market pulled pretty hard back from these defense companies. Give me the 60-second pitch for Northrop. 
Sure. Northrop did really well last year, kind of on the backs of the unexpected spending in the military for the Ukraine war. It was up over 40% last year, and this year is a little bit out of style, out of fashion. It's down over 20%. But it's a great business. It's highly consolidated. There's really just five prime defense contractors, and even that doesn't speak to how consolidated the industry is. For example, last year, Northrop won uh, the contract to redesign uh, the Intercontinental Ballistic Missile Program for the U.S. Air Force, and they were the sole bidder. So that speaks to how how consolidated the market is. It's a company that's going to be around for a very long time. It's largely dependent on Pentagon budgets, which is good and bad, depends how you look at it. Um, it's a slow grower, but that growth translates into very meaningful returns to shareholders, and it's currently out of style, and I think it can do really well uh, going forward. Okay. All right. Uh, literally uh, today, catching itself after making a fresh 52-week uh, low, but turning around. Last one here, the most fun, I think. Let's talk Disney for a sec, Lucas, because this thing is like can't do any right for months. I was saying the last week, though, all the money that they're putting back into the parks does seem like the kind of thing bulls should be rooting for here because it seems like maybe it's better use than lighting money on fire with garbage streaming offerings in the Star Wars space. Hit me. Yeah, Disney is, is a company we've avoided for a very long time, and we continue to avoid it, unfortunately. Uh, it's a business mm. that has a number of businesses really within it. Um, it has the media networks business, which really is ESPN, and that's a fantastic business, which just prints money. Unfortunately for them, it's a business that's shrinking. Mm. It's a business that's going down every year because the number of subscribers keeps going down, while the sports content owners continue to ask for more money. So it's being squeezed. Okay. Then well, so you're, has, you're, this is the one you're, you're very bearish on. I am, I am so bearish. I, 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 I don't know, you know, if, could, <laughs> if there could be a negative price target, I would give you one. Wow. So you think it's that rough for Disney, especially the ESPN effect? I think ESPN is a melting ice cube. I think that parks and entertainment business is a very capital intensive and very cyclical business. It's the first thing that's going to get cut in a family budget if we enter in a recession. Mm. And as you can, as you see yourself, it's very capital intensive. You have to spend a lot of money on these parks. Sure. The movie studios are mediocre at best. Um, and then you have a great business in ESPN, which is shrinking. And they really haven't figured out how to do anything uh, in the streaming world and compete effectively against um, Netflix. And the capital allocation, finally, in this business is also... Uh, you know, leaving a lot to be desired, to be quite frank. Mm. Uh, if you remember the acquisition they did with Fox, um, that was supposed to be uh, they're acquiring all this content for, for over $70 billion. And supposedly they would acquire this content. And if they acquired all this content for $70 billion, why do they need to spend $20 billion a year plus mm. or even $30 billion a year plus on new content for, for Disney Plus? Wow. That's uh, pretty compelling stuff. And I got to say, even I'm kind of rethinking my argument for the parks in the middle of the convo, too, because a lot of that, too, they were able to uh, jack up prices during inflation and get away with it. Uh, so if things slow down. Not only do they lose the traffic, they might have to drop the prices, too, because they've been really gouging people from what I understand. We got to jump, though. Lucas, great stuff. Nice uh, work uh, on the stocks. Appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. There you go. Four bullish picks. One bearish or three and one. Either way, we went through a lot of stocks there in about seven minutes. I told you we were coming in hot.